one more step and Babu Chiri would be standing on the top of Mount Kamjunjunga. You could hear the snow crunch under his boots as his right leg moved first. He took a look around him and noticed the Russian expedition team were bent over backwards, gasping for air. But not Babu. He felt right at home, like his body enjoyed the high altitude conditions. At just 16 years old and staying on top of the third highest peak in the world, Babu had a realization, a path to escape his old life. Babu, one of seven other siblings, was originally born and raised in Nepal. His father, in the 1960s, was mainly a farmer, but did some porter work that mainly focused on the Lakpa La Pass near Everest. It's safe to assume Babu was introduced to the sport of mountaineering from a very young age. The family grew up on a small farm where Babu was expected to pull his own weight, and he did. It was hard work. Even under today's standards, they would not have made much, but especially in the 80s and 90s, you could forget about it. Babu took it upon himself to develop his own education and was very successful in this avenue. He eventually would learn to speak multiple different languages, such as English, Hindu, and of course Nepali, a skill that would prove to be very useful to a world-class Sherpa. Between 1985 to 2000, Babu would develop to be exactly that. Between 1990 and 1999, Babu would summit Everest a ridiculous 10 times. In 1995, he would summit Everest twice in a span of two weeks. The first person to ever successfully summit the mountain in the same month. In 1999 and at the peak of his ability, Babu would push himself to the limits and beyond what anyone deemed possible. Incredibly, he ended up spending 21 hours camping on the summit of Everest. Yes, the actual summit, without oxygen. A feat to this day that has never been matched. Because he was directly in the death zone, it was advised not to sleep, and to entertain himself, Babu was heard singing Nepali folk songs over the radio all night long. The next morning, he descended, and only a month later, he would stand on top of Everest again. The following year, Babu would cement his legacy as he climbed Everest in under 16 hours and 56 minutes. Just to give some perspective, here is a list of all those that have achieved the same time or better as of today. Yeah, that's right, it's just Babu, which goes to show just how difficult this task was. His strength and ability in high altitudes was simply unmatched. Holding two world records on Everest, his reputation only grew. His climbing status even reached the King of Nepal at the time, Birendra, who claimed Babu as a national hero. In 2001, Babu mapped out a plan to traverse, turn around, and then return the same path from the Tibetan base camp to the Kumba base camp. It is deemed too dangerous as the Kumba base camp is facing ever-changing risks from the Kumbu glacier shifting. The route is littered with snow traps laying to capture its prey. It's really unclear why Babu wanted to make the traverse, but from my research, it sounds like he was documenting the route and taking pictures along the way. Now, Babu was widely famous for his speed and strength, but he was also well-liked because of his appreciation for safety three traits together that can be hard to find in the right person. It was very common for Babu to put the value of his life over a task that he deemed challenging. And why shouldn't he? He has a wife who's cooking Babu would rave about, and six daughters at the time who he loved dearly, but also relied heavily on him for income. The man had responsibilities, and loved ones he always wanted to make it back to. As the month of April was coming to an end and the 2001 summer climbing season was fast approaching, Babu prepared himself and his gear for the traverse. The plan was for him to be accompanied by friends and his brother, at least for the start of the journey. The weather was nothing out of the ordinary as the days boringly creeped by in anticipation of the crowds they would have in a few months. April 29th started like any other day. Babu and his companions would spend time on Everest documenting, taking pictures, and just simply having fun. In the afternoon, the group of a few individuals reached Camp 2. The area was first discovered and named by George Mallory, and if you want to know more about the first ever summit attempt of the mountain, I encourage you to watch my video on them. It's important to understand the perspective of this area, so I'll do my best to describe it to you. 
The Western Kham, otherwise known as the Valley of Silence, is a flat glacier valley that lies at the base of the Lhotse face in Mount Everest. You have two mountains on either side of you while you camp near the base of Everest on an incline. All of this means that the valley is essentially a funnel for snow and debris to collect at the bottom. This results in terrain that can have jagged rocks protruding from the snow as you descend. But again, all of this was known to Babu. This area was his playground. Before the sunset, Babu had an inclination to go enjoy the view and snap a few pics. So at 4 p.m., he told his friends at Camp 2 that he would be back in a few hours and to have dinner ready for him. His brother, Dawa, wanted Babu to stay, but knew that he was a man of action, and his request would go unheard once Babu set his mind to something. So instead, Dawa settled for just warning Babu to stay in the vicinity of the camp as the sun was setting and you did not want to be on the mountain alone in the dark. Satisfied that everyone was aware of his plan, off he went. Babu would not hike far from the camp, but far enough around a few bends that camp was not visible. There was a specific angle of the mountain range that caught his eye, and Babu wanted to capture it. Once he was content with his location, he took a look around. As Babu stood there, surrounded by majestic mountains that touched the sky, it was hard not to get emotional. The beauty of it all, the respect for Mother Nature. Babu committed his life to mountaineering, and he was proud of his accomplishments in his country. He recalled standing on top of Mount Kanchunjunga and every event that led to his life to this point. To understand it all, we have to rewind. Babu helped lead the charge for Sherpas connecting with American and European expeditions where he understood the money was held. His ability and prestige gave himself and his family opportunities that coming from his position, only a few can even dream of. Hundreds would follow in his footsteps and attempt to search for a better life off the mountain. Ironically, however, it was when Babu was on that mountain that he saw a future for himself and his loved ones outside of climbing. But his dream was not just limited to his family, it was even extended to a city. It was also his dream to build a school in his hometown of Taksindu, a necessity for all children, one that Babu was never afforded. I believe this act of kindness, despite not being rich himself, proves what type of person Babu was. His own actions speak louder than any words. The sun was setting and his stomach was growling at him to hurry up. Just one more good picture and Babu already knew where he wanted to stand. He started to make his way over to the angle, only a few feet to his right just a few more steps. Back at Camp 2, the sun began to set and Dawa was getting nervous. He warned Babu not to go too far for this very reason, but his brother did what he wanted and you couldn't change that. So Dawa let it go as he patiently counted the hours. Pretty soon it was 6 p.m., then 7, 8, and by 9 p.m., Dawa had a sickening feeling in his chest. Knowing his brother, he should have returned by now, and fairly quickly, Dawa took it upon himself to notify the others at camp and to prepare a search party. But feeling as anxious as he did, Dawa would not wait and left in search of his brother with whoever wanted to tag along. The first thing they did was a general search of the area they knew Babu walked towards. It was not exactly friendly terrain as there was a lot of jagged rocks and snow mounds. And within the hour, they were able to at least determine that they could not see Babu physically standing. But this did not rule out situations where he could have been hidden behind a snow wall or bend. Dawa did not think his brother would climb higher, so that was quickly ruled out. They really started to focus their efforts on the area close by camp, as they had no other reason to search elsewhere. But as 10pm turned to 11pm, nothing had been found. Willie Binigus, another expedition leader, heard the call for a search party and wanted to help. It was well into the night, but with the assistance of his head Sherpa, Pimba Galson, they joined Dawa in his search efforts. With a larger group, they were able to cover more ground, but it was dark very dark and with only natural light illuminating from the moon so they had to rely on their own flashlights to search for any clues it was not until midnight that willie spotted something a footprint in the snow it had to be exactly what they were looking for and it was but very quickly willie realized what happened as dread filled his stomach he called out to the dark sky knowing his companions were close to him and as they made their way over to him willie began to look closer Babu's footprints clearly led to a small hole, a crevasse that was very well hidden, especially in the dark. In fact, it was noted that the only reason the crevasse was exposed is because it was evident that someone had fallen in. Once Dawa and the group had reached Willie, they began to formulate a plan. Quickly, they began tying a rope around Willie, as someone had to descend into the crevasse to find out if Babu was either alive or still reachable. 
Willie was slowly lowered down until he reached what he guessed to be about 10 meters. It was there that he took a look around and his eyes caught something in the ice. It was Babu, and he clearly did not survive the fall. From the looks of it, Willie thought Babu took a hard tumble and violently was thrown against the ice. Willie grimaced and it was not a pretty sight and couldn't help but feel bad for Babu. He managed to make it closer just to confirm that Babu was indeed gone before being pulled back up. Dawa was clearly distressed, but there was nothing anyone could do at the moment. Babu was gone, they all had to accept that. No crying or harping on the fact will change that. And overall, the recovery was called off that night. It would begin the next morning at 6 a.m. The team was very lucky and his body was still accessible as he was stuck between two pillars of ice. They were very careful as they did not want to disturb his body. The fear was that one wrong slip could mean that Babu would be lost to the mountain forever. So they were very meticulous in their efforts, and after three hours, Babu was finally pulled out of the crevasse. His death would take the mountaineering world by storm. The news quickly reached the media and soon made national news around the world. Millions of tributes began pouring in their love and support for Babu. King Berendra of Nepal would send a message to the family that states Babu's demise has caused irreparable loss to the nation and to the mountaineering fraternity. Babu was later transferred to Sherpa Center in Kathmandu, where he lies today, often covered in flowers and Buddhist ceremonial scarves. He has been visited by more people than one can count, including the Prime Minister and most other dignitaries. From a young man on top of the world on Mount Kim Chunga to summoning Everest ten times to building the first school in his hometown, Babu was truly one of a kind. To this day, Babu's dream continues to live on through his family. They created a foundation to help fund the school that one of the greatest Sherpas to ever live wished so desperately for. The link to the foundation will be included below so we can all be a part of a true mountaineering legacy.